I love this man and I don't want to get a divorce, but lately he wants to turn me into some kind of step for wife, like a robot. I'm just like, you cannot set an impossible standard because she will never meet those expectations. He had two babies during our marriage. You need to stop having children until you learn how to be a responsible adult. And I hear him talking about, my wife wasn't nothing before I met her. Don't get me twisted, because I don't need you. Sometimes the biggest takeaway is the lesson that you learn. Here is today's case. These newlyweds may find themselves newly divorced. After two decades together, she is ready to call it quits because of the lies and deception. He's made some mistakes in the past and wants to save his marriage. That's today's case on Divorce Court. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, as you know, we have a virtual audience and it's filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Sharonda from Kingwood, Texas. Sharonda, welcome to Divorce Court. We're so happy to have you with us. Your Honor, this is the case of Steele versus Steele. Thank you, Juan. <clears throat> Miss Kimberly Steele? Yes, Your Honor. You have brought your husband, Mr. Quentin Steele. Yes, Your Honor. To Divorce Court today. The two of you have been together 19 years, married only one year. Yes. And now yeah. you're here in divorce court today because of a number of issues yes. you say have developed between the two of you? Yes. Okay, I'll start with you, Ms. Steele. Why don't you give me some background and tell me what's happening? We've been together for 19 years. Mm -hmm. And then we got married. I fell in love with him. I just, I did, because it was just like something, I, it was about him that I, I love. It was something about him I knew I wanted. But also, it was just off and on cheating that I was finding out that he was cheating, different women, Either I'm, I'm, I'm catching it on his phone or he's staying out all night. Mm -hmm. And it just got to the point where I couldn't, I just couldn't take it. Did you think that getting married would somehow change the circumstances between no. the two of you? No. I just wanted to do I wanted to get married because I loved him and I wanted to get married because I was raised up in church and I, and I couldn't keep shacking up with him. Mm -hmm. Living having, together. Living together and having sex with you and I'm not married. I don't want to leave this world and, and not go the other way because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So that's why I married him. Okay. Let me hear from you, Mr. Seal. What do you have to say about this? We have had issues in the past, um, but these last few years has been a little rough. When we got married, I wanted everything to start over. You know, so everything that happened in the past, let's just let it be there and start from here on now. You know, let's not keep wondering about things that happened years ago. It, it wasn't so, years ago. But, and that's my question to you. So what has happened, because you have known each other for a very long time. Yes. And you, but you've only been married for a year. So what's brought you to this breaking point? One day he wasn't at home. He didn't come home at night. He, he, he stays out all, all night sometimes. This particular time he wasn't at home, and I happened and I kept asking, I was like, God, you know what? Please let me know the passcode word to this phone. Please give it to me. So you prayed to God to get the passcode. I did. And did the Lord bless you with those he digits? He did. He did. He did indeed. And I got it, and I was just happy that I got it, and, and I looked through it, and I was like, wow. The stuff that I seen in there, I couldn't, I mean, I, I believed it, but I was like, after we married, though, that's what really just like, I, it just messed me up. It, it, it totally just messed me up. What did you see? I seen a vagina picture that he took. I seen a twerking picture that he took of another female. These are three different females that I seen. Mm -hmm. On, and, on different occasions mm -hmm. that I've seen on these photos. And it just devastated me. <sighs> what um, was going on? Because this is, you, you're married now. Yes. So obviously she has a, you know, the commitment has to be shown before you get married. Yes, ma'am. But now you're married. Yes, ma'am. So what's going on with the photos and the videos? Um, well, one day, me and Kim was sitting in the house. We had been home all day. And I had to leave out. It was like 1 o'clock that morning. Mm -hmm. And um, later on that day, the, the following day, Kim went through my phone and she seen a picture of, of a video that was sent to me on my phone uh, through text message. But when she looked at it, it looked like it was something like stored in my phone. So you're saying you did not ask for this video to be sent to you, it was no, sent unsolicited. I didn't. No. What about the other photos? She said, I'm gonna look at some of the items you submitted into mm -hmm. evidence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can't show this because it's so graphic. Mm -hmm. But uh, did you recognize the woman? Is a picture of a yes, naked I, woman. Yes, you I, recognize this yes. woman? Okay, and I'm looking at the video. It appears that someone is at least attempting to twerk. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
aside from that video, yes, ma'am. Are you saying all of these women sent you these things unsolicited, or these people, or these are people that you know? No, I ain't gonna say all of them was unsolicited, mm -hmm. but the ones that was recent was. Okay, so only the ones since after you got married mm -hmm. were sent because you're used to getting those things and it just didn't stop when you got married. Do right. you believe that? Ma'am, no. He was sitting there taking the video. Oh, that's how I he was recording was, the video? Heard, yes, ma'am. Yes, and I heard his voice but... telling her that we're gonna eventually have sex after this video. So that's how I know he was there. Mm -hmm. Now, if she sent it again to remind him, yes, I do, rem I, I do believe that, mm -hmm. to just to get to up under my skin. Mm -hmm. You know, because she doesn't like me, and, and, and hey, it is what it is, mm -hmm. but, you know, it, she's very disrespectful. So he took the video? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I, I, I heard his voice. I never disputed that. I heard his voice. Oh, you did not dispute that? I did not dispute that. But you're that saying I it was sent the video. unsolicited yes, to cause problems. Yes, it was an older video. And, and it you was don't sick. believe that? I don't believe it was older. This happened in March, and sometime in March. So what do you say is going on, Mr. Steele? It was the lady's birthday, and I went out. She couldn't get nobody to go out with her, and I even told Kim. So you were doing charity? She didn't have anybody to well, take her out for her birthday? <laughs> It wasn't charity, but I guess if you put it that way. Um, so, you're married. Yes. This is somebody that is interested in you romantically. Am I right, sir? You... Maybe she is, but I'm not. And so, for her birthday, mm -hmm. you take her out because she has no one else. Well, I didn't take to... her out. She paid for everything. Okay, you're there. Yeah, yeah. You are blessing her with your presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't tell your wife because obviously you don't want her to know. Right. So you're essentially out on a date. Okay, that's a problem. He might come home, I, I smell different scents on him. So you're now conducting smell tests uh, when yes, he comes yes, home? Yes, ma'am. A guy she used to work with. She's meeting up with him at her workplace while you, I'm out there. And you thought something was going on? Uh, I mean, clearly, why are you still meeting him? You don't believe that she stayed faithful during your marriage, sir? made you accept a proposal from Mr. Steele? Like I said, I loved him. I loved him. I was in love with him. I fell in love with him years ago. So you got who you chose, right? Who got, right. You got who you picked. Because mm -hmm. you can give people another chance, but that doesn't mean marriage. That's right. Because there are other incidents. And I want to hear from you. I know you have some things you want to say, too. Um, well, it's different things that I have caught him with, like smelling. He might come home, and I, I smell different scents on him, as far as perfume. And I, cause I checked his box, I'm sorry, but I checked his boxes because he lies a lot. So, so you, you're now conducting smell tests when he, come, I, when yes, he comes home? Yes, ma'am. And, um, he was saying that he had a cousin that he was staying with and he was, um, supposedly been staying with a cousin, but come to find out he wasn't. He was staying with another female. And I was giving him groceries and stuff like that. And, and I looked, I had to so he took me over there to the, the woman's house and when I looked out, I, when he fell asleep, I went and I, I was going through her things and, and I found a, um, an envelope. Mm -hmm. And I seen her name. Mm -hmm. And that's how I found out that he wasn't with a cousin. And I, all the belongings that I seen was his belongings. I never seen a cousin's belongings. So this was not a cousin? Yes, it was. <sighs> that's the thing with her. The sneaking stuff, I can't stand it. I wouldn't have to if you like um, stop. I try to do everything I can to be open with Kim. And besides not telling but, her you took but, another but, woman I mean, out for her I, birthday? I slips up. I slips up and I do do things that's not appropriate. It's not like I'm just walking around and say, hey, let me just today, I'm gonna go and do this and that and all the third. There's be a lot of back things behind it before I even attempt to like, let me just go out and get some air. If I go out and get some air, that's cheating the cam. It, obviously, if it's to the point where you're coming home and you have to pass a smell test and you know yes. all trust has been broken. Yes. Tell me about um, Facebook, sir. Okay, well, with Facebook, I intentionally went through her phone and deleted Everybody that wasn't a family member or a person that I didn't know. It was over a thousand something people. I deleted off her phone. Why? Because I feel like she tells me that uh, you shouldn't have these numbers in your phone because they can, can contact you. Well, with Facebook, it's the same way. Like uh, a guy she used to work with. She's meeting up with him at her workplace uh, while I'm not there. And you thought something was going on? Uh, I mean, clearly, why are you still meeting him? It wasn't nothing going on. I, and as a matter of fact, he didn't never see that. I told him I did because he was cheating also again. So this is why I met up with this guy. I never cheated. We talked. And I, I did vent to him. But that well, he was cheating on me. And you, you don't believe that she stayed faithful during your marriage, sir? She has. So why don't you just say that? It's, it doesn't change what you've done no. by acknowledging that she's been faithful. Right. 
What happened with the car? He came over. I was having a cookout. And he had moved out completely. I didn't even know he had moved out. This had... was after you got married? No, this was before we okay. got married. And he came over there and he was cutting up, like, why is you having a cookout? I said, well, you left me, so why would it matter if I'm having a cookout and I got friends over? So y'all came... y'all were that couple arguing at the cookout? Yes. There's and always we, one. We switched, we switched the car. When, when I went in her car, I found her, her information and I called her. Mm-hmm. My, my, my family member took me over there to get the car that we shared together mm-hmm. and she, the, the girl came and got her car. Because he drove her car over there? Yes. And this was all before you got married? Yes. Miss Steele, a wedding changes nothing but maybe your last name. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't change people. Yes, right. If someone doesn't know how to treat you right before you say I do, they're gonna be just as ignorant after the fact. I actually asked someone to come to court today. His name is Abalash Pulikin. She wants to stay, but at the same time not be disrespected. And I think that's one of the reasons you're hurting so much right now. You spend so much time dealing with your husband's pain that you haven't really dealt with your own. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. There's been a lot going on between the two of you over the course of the last few years. You've been dealing with some things. Yes. My husband, he has health issues. He's sick. And I want him to do is stop smoking cigarettes. Mm-hmm. I, I, I do. And he don't want to... I mean, he wants to stop, but it's hard to keep seeing him, and I don't want him, you know... It's, it's bad for you. Mm-hmm. I'm very emotional about him stopping mm-hmm. and, and the health issue, so... Mm-hmm. But you're still smoking. I recently picked back up. And it's hard. I feel like... I mean, it's by myself sometimes. There's not a point it can have that I don't go to. But when it comes to mine... It's something. She has to work or she has to do something. <laughs> it's hurtful, you know? So what's happening? Are you not going to the appointments because it's too painful for you? I, I do go to the appointments. Um, I feel like it's hypocritical, but I, I know you're smoking, and I'm going to keep going to this appointment sitting here, and you're not knowing you, you, you're not supposed to be smoking these cigarettes. Do you mind if I ask what you're dealing with? I'm dealing with cancer. OK. Um, and is it lung cancer? Yes. And that's why the doctors have talked to you specifically about your smoking? Yes. So, are, are, is your behavior even more reckless now, you feel like, because of this diagnosis? Just to be honest, I start getting the I don't care attitude because mm-hmm. I start noticing you're not going to my appointments, you're fussing at me, you're arguing at me, mm-hmm. we're arguing about stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like this is the time where I tell you what, like, I just want to have fun. Mm-hmm. But it's that little bit of stuff. It's not small. And, and, but to you, it's always big to me. I'm like, can we can get past it. So it's a matter of perspective, sir. Yes. And, but you have to understand, everybody has a different perspective. Right. And when it comes to marriage, it's all about understanding, understanding. and communicating with each other. And yes, if something ma'am. means a lot yes, to ma'am. her... And by the way, you not smoking... This, you have a child together, am yes, I right? Ma'am. Yes. So it's not even just about her. Yes, it's ma'am. about you being around for your child as well. Yes, yes. I actually asked someone to come to court today, mm-hmm. and he's a licensed therapist and counselor. His name is Abalash Pulikin, and I asked him to come, and I wanted him to spend a few minutes speaking to both of you. Okay. Juan, would you bring in the witness? Thank you, Mr. Pulikin, for being here. There are a number of issues the uh, Steels are dealing with. Mm-hmm. I think now we have a little bit more clarity as to what's happening and the struggles that they are facing right now. Because Mr. Steele has been diagnosed with lung cancer, he's continuing to smoke. Mm -hmm. In addition to all of these other issues, she's feeling disrespected in this marriage. So she's struggling Mm -hmm. with how to hold him accountable, but at the same time support him in the midst of all of this. So can you uh, speak to Mr. Steele, and then I will up you to share a few words with his wife. Absolutely. So the thing uh, that I'm seeing here, uh, as I've listened to the two of you talk, as I've read your paperwork, is two people who are dealing with an incredible amount of pain. 
Um, so Mr. Steele, with you, you're dealing with stage four cancer. Uh, and in the past, uh, someone that you loved very dearly was taken from you in a really horrible way. So you're a man who's lived a very difficult life. And when people live very difficult lives, their lives become about pain management. Their lives become about making it to the next day. You're an intelligent guy. You know the effects of cigarettes on you. But at the same time, we also understand that cigarettes provide you with relief. Alcohol provides you with relief. Talking to other women provides you with relief. And so you're torn. You know, you're doing what you can to manage the pain, but you're still hurting yourself. So what I'm going to say is, we're going to have to change the ways in which you manage pain so that you can continue to be here for yourself and you can continue to be here for your wife. You have a wonderful woman, Mr. Steele. Yes. She loves you. You have a wonderful child who loves you. And I would love for them to be able to see you grow old, even if it's not on your own terms. And Mrs. Steele, the thing that I wanted to tell you is, I know that nothing about the situation is easy. And so I just want to say, in addition to supporting him, support yourself. Because when you become a caretaker, and that's what you've become, you get left in the back seat. And I think that's one of the reasons you're hurting so much right now. You spend so much time dealing with your husband's pain that you haven't really dealt with your own. It's hard for me to see you cry because when you're dealing with an illness like this and then you on top of that you feel disrespected or you've been disrespected in your marriage mm -hmm. how do you handle the emotional aspects of that because she wants to stay and support her husband and support her family but at the same time not be disrespected mm -hmm. i think you have every right to be angry but the hard thing about dealing with someone who has a chronic health condition is they're not always going to be there for you in the way that you need them to be. And that's not fair, but it is the truth. So I'm going to say, find someone to talk to that you trust, a pastor, a mentor, someone, that you can unload all your pain and talk about it. Because I think one thing that's so hard for you right now is that you're feeling like you have to deal with all of this on your own. You feel lonely, you feel isolated. His pain is your pain and your pain is your pain. When do you get a break? I think you need one. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Polican. Thank you, Your Honor. This is very helpful. So, Mr. Steele, I have to say, there's not a person in this room that can identify with, with what you're currently going through right now and the break that you feel like you've been dealt in life. But at the same time, you know, you have someone who loves you. Yes, you have a family. You have a wife. You have a child. Yes, and you have so much to live for, so much to fight for, yes, and she just wants to see you fighting to do that so she doesn't feel like she's in this fight all by herself. Mm -hmm. That's what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. That's why she doesn't want to go to the doctor's appointments with you, because she feels that you're not taking the steps that you need to take. So she can be there with you. So it's so much bigger than these other women and messing around and all of these other things because it's like on top of all of this, then there's this disrespect. So that has to stop. If you want to have the woman who's been by your side all these years to continue to stay by your side. Yes, ma'am. It is not a battle yes, that she can fight for you. Yes, ma'am. She has to fight it with you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I have Mr. Pullican, um in the back and I want him to recommend a local counselor for you back in your hometown because I think you need ongoing help beyond court today. And that's what I'd like to provide for you. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. Thank you.